Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Edwards, along with my trusty co-host and podcast producer, Mr. Stu Smith. What's up, Stu? Hello, Jim. And uh, we have a special episode for you today. It's episode 150. That's pretty impressive, Stu. Not many people can put up two or three episodes of a podcast, let alone 150. And I blame you. I mean, I credit you for our ability to be able to do that. Because if it wasn't for you, I'd still be sloshing around at episode five or six. Hey, you know, we so. figured it out. But you know what we have after 150, uh, 150 episodes? We're finally finding our voice. <laughs> that, but we also have a great story. Oh, yeah. It. Absolutely. Jim. Absolutely, fact, we do. In fact, that's what we're going to talk about today. Stories? How to make your own story for okay. content. Well, not just how to make your own story, but how to make a story that actually gets people to take action and do something. Yeah. Doesn't even I have to be that's... your own story. It could be a story. Right. It could be fiction, Jim. Yeah, you probably, in a sales situation, if it's fiction, you want to say, so let's talk about the typical journey or a journey that might sound like the typical customer. Uh, as opposed to, hey, here's a made up story to get you into an artificial emotional state so that you can make a purchase. Yes, you don't want to, you know. Good point. Good point. It's all about positioning, you know, yes. the angle. So, um, Stu, what if I could teach you how to tell a good story? What's up, Kevin? How I could show you how to tell a basic story by answering just six questions. That'd be cool. I'd, I'd like to see those six questions, Jim. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're actually going to do this, and I'm going to use the board, and I'm going to explain to you how this ties in with the main parts of the hero's journey. Okay? Okay. So the first question is, who were you? And what were you doing? And what were you doing at the start of the story? So I was a blank. I am a blank. I was a. All right. So we're going to assemble your story. Let's tell the story of. Your first semester at the Naval Academy, and the purpose of telling this story is to get people to get in shape before they get somewhere, okay? So, Stu, who were you and what were you doing at the start? I was a uh, what? A high school graduate destined to go play football at Navy and later become a Navy pilot. Okay. The second question is, so I want you to kind of keep track of these okay. because you're going to tell the whole story at the end. All right. Yep. What, the second question is what event or decision caused a change in your life? So here's something that happened that changed my life forever. All right, so you're a high school athlete headed to the Naval Academy to become a pilot. What happened? Well, I show up at Plebe Summer completely unprepared. I didn't even know the ranks of the Navy, much less <laughs> prepare myself for the fitness test that uh, was the day that I arrived or the day after I arrived. And, uh -huh. uh, it, it was a it was a slow and brutal start, Jim. Okay. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so the third question is: as you see this, then you're gonna see how you're gonna polish this. Okay. Sure. So the third question is: what problem or conflict arose quickly?
So what problem? Physical fitness standards, academic standards, and man, this was going to be a long four years. Okay. If I could even get to the end. All right. So the problem was, and you just said that. Okay. So now the next question is, and you can kind of see how this follows along with what we did in the Jim and Stu show. Um, when did you hit rock bottom and how, what did that feel like? I would say it all accumulated after failing my first fitness test, getting my first F ever on a test, chemistry. Okay. N not making the football team. And your girlfriend from high school breaks up with you. Okay. Now, the fifth question is, what revelation or discovery did you make or decision did you make that sparked a turnaround? And then the thing is, then something happened that changed everything. So you went home for Thanksgiving. Yeah, go home for Thanksgiving. I'm crying to my mom how bad it I'm doing and how much I miss them. And she was like, just come home. And I was like, I can't quit. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, well, quit crying and let's figure this out. Wow. She used a good, and later she said she was really hoping I would not come home. Um, yeah, my that, parents just told me you can't come home. Yeah. <laughs> You're not welcome. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was hoping that reverse psychology would work. And, and it did. I have to give her credit for that. <clears throat> All right, so the sixth question is, what was the transformation you experienced? Did you ultimately reach your original goal and did you surpass it? So, what was the transformation and did you reach your goal? Yes, I found mentors. I found extra time and talking to instructors and extra instruction and found workout partners and you know I didn't do it alone you know I had a team of people that helped me okay largely by their example but I made a decision to watch them and learn from them and figure out what they're doing right to keep them where they are okay so now you see the entire framework in front of you. We look at it. Okay. So think about the hero's journey. This is the, this is the hero's journey. Okay. First question is, you know, who were you and where are you at the start? That's the start of the hero's journey. Yep. Okay. Second one, what event or decision caused a change? We're over the cliff. What problem or conflict arose? When did you hit rock bottom? What revelation or decision did you make? All right. And then what ended up happening to you? That's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. That's how you do it. So now let's do this. I want you to string all those thoughts that you just did together into a coherent story. So I was a. I was a teenager. I knew I wanted to serve as an F-14 pilot. So and I wanted to play college football at the same time. OK, so here's what happened. Yeah, I've, uh, I found what the event, Naval Academy. What event or decision caused a change? So 
Yeah. Here's here's something that happened. Here's here's something that happened that changed my life forever. Say that again. Here's something that changed my life forever. I got okay. in the friggin' Naval Academy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finding the Naval Academy as an option to do both, you know, seemed like the perfect fit, and I did everything I could I, in my power to get there academically, athletically, team captains, leadership, and clubs and other activities. You know, the process was going exceptionally well for me, almost too well for the overconfident 18-year-old boy, you know, as as the work and effort were paying off. Uh, so then I got to the Naval Academy. The problem was I got to the Naval Academy and... And um, I peaked at 18 years old, and I just started <laughs> going downhill. You know, fast forward, I first few months of the Naval Academy, I failed my first fitness test. I had less than a 2.0 grade point average before Thanksgiving, uh, did not make the football team, and to top it off, my high school girlfriend did not want to uh, be part of my life anymore. And I can't and blame her because I wasn't a whole lot of fun to be around anyway. Okay. And that's when I truly hit rock bottom. Yes. Okay, tell me a little bit more about rock bottom, or you pretty much mixed up. And and okay, and that's when no. I drew. So you kind of mixed the two of those together. But when I and then something happened that changed everything. I went home for Thanksgiving. I went home for Thanksgiving, and I was snapped back into reality by a clever use of reverse psychology by my mother. She says, "Why don't you just quit and come home?" And I was, like I, I, it shook me it, like it was even an option. And I said, I can't quit. And her perfect reply was, well, let's figure this out. Quit crying and let's do something about it. So and with that, I found members uh, or mentors at the academy that were very helpful. Uh, they were classmates. They were teammates. You know, I made the rugby team. Um, it was different than football, but it was a lot of fun. And there were some hardcore dudes on there that were going Marine Corps and SEALs. And I got to see what they were doing. And through their example, I figured out how to make it through there. Okay. And that, that was a big moment for me. And now I just had to do it. Right. There you go. You just told the story. Okay, and then you can keep going with the story as far as you want. Like, I ended up getting a slot to go to Bud's, and I became, and I was served in the SEAL teams for eight years, and blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, that's that's how you go through. Carlin asked a question, um, where are we find it? Or he said, so here's where we're finding the hook for the story, right? The hook typically for the story is somewhere in in here. One of these two. Okay, like so the revelation discovery or the the rock bottom, e either one, depending on which one is more compelling. So, you know, how how my mom saved my seal career at Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, that's a great hook. That's awesome. I love it. That's that's, awesome. that's a really great hook. Um, you know, uh, how my girlfriend dumping me led me to becoming a Navy SEAL. OK, that's not that that again might be OK, might not. That's why we but these are the areas where the cook, the, the hook comes from. And that's like a proven literary technique of beginning the story at a point of high drama. And so. I, you know, you, you know where. In a book, it might start off with somebody, you know. Jethro was Jethro was totally out of breath, running through the woods. He could hear the shots going off, and the bullets were zinging by him like angry hornets going after a, a ten cent mule. And all he could think in the back of his head was, "It's a freaking dog! It's a freaking dog! Why are you shooting at me?" And then there's a pause. And then the story starts, you know, two hours earlier, three weeks before, two, two, two days prior. 
and it picks up the story. So now you've led with that point of high drama. And for the next hundred pages, you're wondering why Jethro is getting shot at, screaming at the top of his lungs. It was a freaking dog. It was a freaking dog. Now, it turns out, as you do, after you do the 100 pages, you find out that Jethro accidentally shot the crazy old coot's dog, which he thought was, an, was a deer. And the crazy old coot now has a death um, thing against him and his entire family and spend the next 300 pages watching his whole family get whacked with machetes and maces and traps and all kinds of cool stuff. You can see where my head is. That's a book, actually, I want to write. Um, That's a rough one. So, but that's beginning with the point of high drama. You hook them with the drama, not here's a story of how I was a really successful 18 year old who was a stud on campus and got accepted to one of our nation's service academies as I should, <laughs> as I should have. As you look off into the distance with your square jaw and your strong flowing 80s hair, that feathered stuff you had oh, working yeah. there. Good yeah, stuff. I, so I've Good seen stuff. those pictures. Um, feathered. So, <laughs> it was. You had that feathered air on the side, man. Side, wings. In the um, middle, part in the middle. So, <laughs> so that's the hook comes from here. And but this helps answering these questions helps you to come up with the framework. And yes, I'm I'm putting together a, a better wizard than this to help you to be able to you know, tell a story. And what I do want to do is give everybody a little bit of a teaser. We're actually uh, in a couple weeks going to be doing a sales story masterclass. I'm going to spend an entire afternoon with you all and I'm going to teach you a masterclass on sales stories. I'm going to go more in depth into the hero's journey more in depth into origin stories. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different tools that you can use to create amazing amazing stories. We're gonna go into your story inventory so that you can pull these stories up at will and be able to use them to get people what you want them to do. You can check that out at salesstorymasterclass.com. Uh, it's free. So you can spend an afternoon with me for free. Other people would charge you a thousand bucks for that, but uh, you'd be able to jump on there for, with me. Um, and we haven't really, we've been soft pushing it, but now we're gonna start pushing, pushing it. So sales nice. story masterclass. Yeah, I think it's gonna be real good. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Hey Jim, real quick, Bob asked, can you read the bottom line that the, uh, the banner's covering number six and below? So what was the transformation? Did you reach your goal? And then the, the writing prompt for that or the transition, the segue is, but after all that, now I am or was able to. So, you know, so Stu was able to get it together, figure out how to pass school, how to, how to operate at the collegiate level and be able to. Um, I had to yeah. up my game, basically. Yeah. Figured out how to up my game. There you go. Yeah. Well, you were too busy getting by on good looks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've seen that picture of you power lifting with that 1980s weight belt on, wearing a pair of jeans. That was yeah. like the big thing, man, in your in your Oh yeah, lifting in jeans. That was cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. With with your with your work boots on. So to work. That was done. a that was a big thing, man. You believe the eighties were, you know, like forty years ago? It's ridiculous. <sighs> so, yep, it's yeah. salesstorymasterclass.com. Let me double check that. Uh, I'm not telling people the wrong thing. Yep, sales story masterclass. Pretty straightforward offer. How to double, quadruple, or even 10x your sales by telling better stories in an afternoon. Brand new masterclass reveals the secrets to better sales stories for social media, sales copy, and content marketing, no matter what you sell. Pretty good little offer there, Stu. I like that, Jim. So, man, that was pretty good. I think uh, you can definitely take that, but I'm, I'm definitely motivated to... I actually, when I took... Terry to the doctor 
on Monday, I outlined the new wizard that I'll be creating. Which nice. I'll be show I'll be showing people uh, on that masterclass. It's gonna be pretty cool. You got to mix a little bit of Halbert's hook in there too, because if you throw that nice little hook right there at the top for a title, that'd yeah. be really cool. Because yeah. uh, you know that, that the one little hook that you had in there, maybe pull the hook from that section at the bottom where either you're in the spec ops candidate crying or you're the you know your mom saved your career at thanksgiving right I mean, yeah. it's somewhere in that zone of uh you know your epiphany or your ultimate doom oh absolutely and the big thing to to remember is that everybody wants to draw this big you know sharp dividing line between oh this is sales copy and this is content it's like there's a there's a difference you know and there's not sales to one person's sales letter is another person's free report one one person's you know pitch is another person's informative blog post so it's all about putting the right information in front of your target audience it's only a pitch if it feels like you're being sold if it's something you want to buy ain't no pitch that's just getting a whole bunch of additional information that is true so you make a, the reason i say that is you just said use the gary halbert hooks with your story well, the Gary Halbert hooks are just for sales copies, Stu. My story what? is my story is for, you know, educational purposes. No, <laughs> you gotta hook people to read the damn story. Yeah. So that's, you know, any hook is a good hook if it stops the right person in their tracks, pre-frames them for what's coming next, and is a pattern interrupt that breaks them out of their hypnosis and actually gets them to pay attention to the content that's coming next. So somebody asked, how much is the free masterclass? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Here's the thing. And I did this on purpose. I told you it was free, right? Uh huh. But I don't say it's free on the, on the page. Ah. But you know why? because this is as much a test as anything else. I want to see, it's one thing to say, hey, free masterclass. It's another thing for people to whack that register button, not knowing if it costs or if it's free. So there's a lesson there. Because if I can get this thing, you know, depending on, you know, it's, everything's a giant experiment. You know, anymore, it's like everything's a giant test. Why not? Yeah, let's sure. let's see what will happen. But yeah, it, I don't tell anybody. It was actually a great question. Uh, you know, how much is it? I said it was free, but it doesn't say it's free on the page. And that's on purpose. So, cool. Um, and the URL for the masterclass is salesstorymasterclass.com. You go there, we'll help you. Cool. Well, anything else, Stu, or we wrap this up right on time? No, I think that's a good uh, ending to this story, Jim. The, the moral of the story is <laughs> head on over to salesstorymasterclass.com and sign up for the masterclass because whether it's free or whether it's paid will be a fine value for the time, attention, and money you pay to attend. There you go. So, there you go. Everybody have a great day. Appreciate you. Oh. And don't forget, Mr. Pickles is here. Man hadn't been here in a couple of weeks, so I just yeah. want to let you know he's still around. Okay, good. I, um, oh, another lesson. Somebody said, will the masterclass be recorded? Absolutely, the masterclass will be recorded. It is a free live masterclass cool let that let that one percolate in your head it's a free live masterclass all right i'll see y'all soon